Hey, I got a comment on my blog just a few days ago where I'm suggesting how to use test-driven development. And the comment says that uh, right after you fix your test, like right after you make your test green, you don't send the pull request immediately. First, you take a look at the code around your changes and then you refactor it and then you make a pull request. It sounds like a fair comment. It sounds like a, a good idea in general. And um, there is even a, a famous rule called Boy Scout rule, as far as I understand, introduced by uh, Robert Martin, where he says that uh, every programmer has to uh, return the code back to the repository in a better state than it was before uh, that programmer checked out the code. Uh, sounds like a, a really good intent. If everybody, if all programmers will do the same, if we will uh, return back the code with changes, with improvements, comparing to what we had before, then the quality of the code base will grow, it seems like. it. But however, I strongly disagree with this approach. It is a good approach if you are the only developer in the project, if it's, if it's your code base, if you work with it and there's nobody around you, there's just no team, just you. In that case, of course, every morning you open your code base, you improve it, you make it better, you make changes, you make increments, you make new features, and you, of course, remove and refactor something you had before. Perfect, that's how you should do it. And then you return it back to the repository, and then next morning you have a better code base. And then every day, every day your code base grows. But if there is a team, a team of people, a team of programmers, which is funded by somebody, which is going to some direction together, and there is some limitations, constraints in terms of time and budget, then you should not decide what needs to be improved and what needs to be refactored if you are in a good way, just a programmer. I'm not trying to diminish your role as a, as a programmer, saying that you're just a programmer, but try to understand that you are, we are, programmers are just resources in the project. And our job is to apply our skills, apply, apply our uh, experience to solve the problems the project needs us to solve. If the project says, we need to implement this feature, then I'm as a programmer, I start implementing this feature, I make the necessary changes, I do the testing, I introduce the unit test, and then I see that there are problems around my feature, that something needs to be refactored. What do I do in this case? I return the code with the changes without refactoring. And then, as you may guess, I create a ticket. I inform the project that there is an opportunity to spend some extra money, extra time, extra resources, meaning resources, meaning me, myself, I am the resource. So I'm suggesting to the project by the ticket, by using the ticket, that it's time to spend some extra time slash money slash resources to improve the code base. And then the decision will be made by the project manager, not by myself. I'm not a project manager, I'm just a programmer. My job is to do the technical work. The job of a project manager is to decide how to spend the resources of the project. In, in many projects, there are, there are no project managers. In many projects, the team plays the role of a project manager. But still, it is the role of a project manager. It's not my decision as a developer. This decision has to be made by somebody or a group of people who is or are a project manager. If I do it voluntarily, if I do it myself, if I make the decision myself, I am stealing money and stealing resources from the project. I am only doing a harm to the project. I am, you know, I am damaging the project because I take the resources out of the budget, out of the timeline by not informing anyone. So nobody knows that I do the refactoring. They still think that I'm working on the feature, that I'm fixing the bug, that I'm preparing a pull request for this feature. But while I'm actually doing some refactoring, which nobody maybe needs, maybe no, nobody wants that refactoring, maybe the project is going to be closed right after, right after I finish the feature. But I'm still, as a good programmer, as a Boy Scout, I'm doing something which nobody approved. Okay, you may say that there is a bureaucracy in our project and this ticket will be staying there forever and I just created it and it hangs in, this, uh, in the backlog for days while it's a refactoring which I can do in a few hours. You can blame the project for that. 
But by only blaming the project and still doing the refactoring uh, uh, in this uh, phantom mode when nobody knows what you're doing, then you're even making the situation worse. You're not revealing the problem. You're not showing everybody that that the backlog is grow the backlog is growing and we're having uh, we're having more and more requests for refactoring and somebody has to pay attention to this. Instead, you're just uh, concealing the problem. You're making it invisible. You have to work within the scope given to you by the project. And when you do the gold plating in management, it's, it's called gold plating. So you are uh, going outside of the scope, of the scope, delivering something which nobody asks you, asks you for. In this case, you're doing only, uh, you're only harming the project. It, you're not a good boy scout in this case. You're actually a bad developer with the wrong mindset. So your mindset has to be, I do the work within the scope and every time I see something around that and I see that there's refactoring required here and there, I create tickets, I create many tickets. I let everybody know that we need refactoring here and there. And then they may come back to me these tickets and I will resolve them later. But I don't do anything myself like this rule suggests. It's a wrong idea. Refactoring of the code without tickets is stealing money and stealing resources from your project. Don't do that. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.